Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury beauty. Today we're talking about the new Chanel Rouge Allure Velvets from the La Comet collection. There are eight shades released. Each year Chanel releases a set of lipsticks with the click top opening with a special embossed cap. Last year we had Le Lyon. Before that we had the Camellia. This year we have La Comet. And this is an asymmetrical five-pointed star that was Gabrielle Chanel's good luck charm, essentially. And Comets actually inspired her for her first and only uh, high-end jewelry line that she created. And it was called Bijou de Diamant. So that's kind of where the inspiration for this came from. And a quote from the Chanel website, a comet reflects light with such great intensity that it continues to shine even after it has passed. And so as we're talking about these lipsticks, I'm gonna go ahead and start showing you the lip swatches. This comet inspired collection is a slightly different formula than the other Rouge Allure Velvets because these are supposed to be more of a luminous matte and they have been infused with ultra fine mother of pearl pigments to create some of that sparkle and shine that is supposed to remain even after it essentially dries down now i have to say formula wise this does feel there's more slip and give it's a little bit of a i wouldn't say like it's oily in the sense that you can rub your lips together easily and smoothly but it's not oily as in it feels like it's going to feather and bleed. So it's got a lot of slip. There definitely feels like there's some silicone in there, but it also feels like a little bit of an oily texture as well, if that makes sense. So the typical Rouge Allure Velvets feel a bit drier. They still have the same like thin thinness on your lips. So it still feels like a very thin, light layer of lipstick but the others are a bit more matte in appearance and they don't have that same slip on the lips that these do. So these I find to be actually a bit more comfortable than the traditional Rouge Allure Velvets that have come out in the past. And again, I think they're supposed to have more of a shine. So I actually consider this more of a satin matte versus a true like velvet matte or matte finish because it does not dry down completely without leaving that sheen. So these do dry down, um, but not 100%. I still, you know, un until you remove that like layer of lipstick and all you're left with is a, a pigment, you know, you can still feel product on your lips. You still have some slip there. As for longevity, I would say that these wear about the same as other Rouge Allure Velvets. You know, you are gonna get like a pigmented stain remaining on your lips after maybe four hours or so of regular wear with eating and drinking and so forth. Now, some of these shades in here, or rather one shade in particular, it can be a little patchy with a light layer. So that's the one that I'm actually wearing in this video right now, 178 Brun Celeste. And I do have a demo of that. The first time I tried this on was in the first spring and summer 2022 collection. I have this in demo one for that video. I'll leave that linked below, but you can see the application of that there as well. And when you use a sheer layer for the Brun Celeste shade, it is a little bit patchy. The other shades don't really do that so much. You notice, you know, with certain shades, after one sheer layer, it, you know, if I rub my lips together, it kind of makes it a little bit more inconsistent throughout the lip, but I wouldn't go as far as saying it was actually patchy. And that was really more due to my application. Whereas the Brun Celeste shade, it feels a little bit oilier in texture, I would say compared to the other shades. And I think it probably has something to do with the pigments for this one because it's a really unique shade and I actually really like this shade. So if you build it up on your lips, it takes away the patchiness, but as it wears down, you know, you do want, this is one you would either want to reapply or keep like a lip gloss or something around. So as it does wear off, you know, if you coat it with something else, you don't notice any patchiness. So just a note about that particular shade, but I didn't really have any issues with the other shades.
So we do have eight shades in this collection. They retail for 42 US dollars and these are all limited edition. They have an 18 month shelf life and they are made in France. Again, we cover that they have a click top closure or case just like other lipsticks. So moving on, let's go ahead and move on to some arm swatches and some comparisons. We're gonna start off by swatching all of the shades in this collection. So this one here is 108, which is Terre d'Etoile. So let's put that here and I'll just build this up a little bit on the outer portion so you can see how deeply it can go. And you can see that this is kind of a warm toned brown. So you've got some golden tones and some reddish tones in here but I would say it's a warm tone, medium brown, and it's really, I think it's a really pretty shade. So you've got, you know, it kind of looks a bit reddish, but you've actually got more golden undertones to it, which gives it a warmer appearance. And next up, we have 118 Bois de Rose Astral. And I'm just gonna leave a little space between these for additional comparisons. So this is Bois de Rose Astral, and this is a warm rose shade. You do have a touch of brown in here, but for the most part, it's just gonna be like a warm tea rose. And again, all of these have a little bit of luminosity. There's finely crushed pearlized pigments in here that give it that sheen. So in the in the actual bullet, let me show you this again. This is the Terre de Toile you can see like a hint of sparkle in there. So I would say sparkliness is pretty comparable to those from uh, some of the holiday collections that Chanel has done. Then we have 128 Rose Eclatante. And this is also gonna be a warmer rose, but it's more of a vibrant pink. But again, we have warmer tones for this one. So there's, it's like a reddish pink almost. If it had more red in it, it would be a tomato red, but it has rose there instead. So it's more of a warm rose with tomato red kind of mixed into it. And then we have 138 Rouge V Radiant. And Rouge V is one of the permanent shades. So we're gonna compare the radiant version to this one here. You can see that it is a pretty neutral red and I think you know it has a touch of that brick red look to it but it's not overly it doesn't have a, a ton of that which keeps it a little bit more neutral then we have 148 Rouge Cosmique and you can see this one's going to be a little bit brighter it's a cooler tone red this one has a little bit more of a blue base 158 Brun Solaire. Now, I think this is an interesting shade as well because you have some brown in here, but this is really one of those burgundy reds with some brown mixed in there. So, I mean, all of these tend to have like a touch of brown in them. Um, but yes, I would say this one's more burgundy mixed with brick red with a touch of brown. And then we have 168. Corpora Etoile, running out of space here. You can see that this one is similar to other Porpora shades from Chanel, and you have more of those purple toned berries. And this one, you know, it's kind of like a brighter pink mixed with purple, you know, that purple berry shade. And then the last one here is 178 Brun Celeste. Yeah, let me re swatch that. Um, we're just going to have to go down here. So you can see how sheer you can get this. It's just, unfortunately, the formula can be a little bit patchy when you go that sheer. You can see it's definitely more sheer with one layer than any of the other shades. And again, I think that has to do with the pigments because this shade's really unique. It actually is kind of like a really deep eggplant and brown shade mixed together like cocoa and eggplant and i think it's really pretty and i think those eggplant those 
it's more of that blue based eggplant kind of mixed in there it gives it a more unique shade than typical like deep brown lipsticks so let's go ahead and do some comparisons we're going to go ahead and start off with the shade rouge v which is shade 58 this is from the rouge allure velvet permanent line and we're going to put that right here with um number with the radiant shade so let's put that right here so this is rouge v versus rouge v radiant and you can see that the colors are pretty much an exact match here i feel like the rouge v radiant might have a touch more blue in it um ever so slightly a, a little bit cooler compared to the regular rouge v that could just be you know the way the light hits it though with those pearlized pigments it's pretty much the same next let's move on to the red lips that came from the chanel number no. five collection so this one here shade 99 pirate and i'm just gonna do these vertically so you can kind of see how they go you can see pirate is going to be cooler in tone here it's more of a blue based red and then and by the way these are the rouge allure formula so they're not a velvet we also have 176 independent Let's make that a little bit brighter. Okay, so you can see that that one is going to be closer to Rouge Cosmique, but it's slightly warmer than Rouge Cosmique. We also have number 157, Legendaire. And let's put that one right down here as well so you can kind of see that how they go. So this is going to be cooler, a little bit more purple, not quite as purple as um, Purple A12. We have 191 Rouge Brulant. So there's that. And you can see there's a little bit more brown in it than um, the Rose Ecl Eclatant. Um, yeah, it's just, it's going to be warmer, a little bit more neutral, or rather a little bit more brown. And then we have 147 Emblematique. And you can see that that one is going to be closest to 148 Rouge Cosmique. So they're pretty close to each other, I would say. A few more shades to go through. We have another Rouge Allure. This is 817 and this one is Rouge Splendide. And I wanted to put that right here with, uh, what is that, Rose Eclatant. You can see that this is gonna be lighter and more pink Rose Eclat than Rose Eclatant. This one here is one of the Rouge Coco lipsticks in 494. And this is shade Attraction. So this came out last year, I believe. You can see it's a really deep brown base as well, but this one has a lot more red in it. This one is more like burgundy mixed with cocoa instead of purple mixed with cocoa. And this is gonna be a lot warmer in tone than the Brun Celeste. We have 117 or Quivra. This is from Holiday 2020. And you can see that those shades match pretty closely with the um this one here is purple a12 so i would say they're pretty close we also have 137 purple door and again that's gonna be pretty close i think this one purple door is closer whereas the or quiver has a little bit more red in it 127 Rouge Door. So you can see this one's gonna be a little bit more neutral than the Rouge Cosmique is here. Another purple one, this is 637 Camellia Porpra. And you can see this one's actually gonna have a little bit more that blue-based purple in there, more eggplant than the Porphyry 12. 277 Rouge Fauve. This is 
the Rouge Allure Velvet formula. Put this right here. And that's gonna be closest here to the Rouge V Radiant. Rouge Fauve and Rouge V are both, I believe they're both permanent shades. And they are similar, but you can see that Fauve is going to be a little bit deeper, a little bit browner. 257 Rouge Triumphal. All right, and you can see they're pretty close, but this one's slightly cooler. 337, this is a Rouge Allure in Camellia Rose. Put that right here. You can see it's gonna be a softer, more delicate pink. It's also a little bit cooler in tone. 847, Rouge Majeste. This is a Rouge Allure formula. Let's put that right here. And let's actually move that down here as well. All right, so it's more pink than the Porpora Etoile. We have 857 Rouge Noble. It's gonna be deeper and more purple still than the Porpora Etoile. And in the Rouge Allure Velvet Extreme, we have 136 Pivoine Noir. And let's put that one right here. Yeah, no, it's gonna be a, more of a brighter red than these other ones here. And we also have 134 Eclosion. And we'll compare that one to this Rose Eclatante. And yeah, I think they're pretty similar. I think this one, the uh, Eclosion, has a little bit more red in it and it's a bit deeper, whereas there's more pink in Rose Eclatante. We have 227 Beige Rougissant. And you can see it's more golden in tone than the Terre de Toile. Uh, and it's a little bit lighter as well. It's more beige. <laughs> and uh, then we also have 237 Beige Ardant. And there we go. That one's going to be closer than to Terre de Toile. You know, it's actually a little bit cooler. Terre de Toile is a little bit more golden in tone but you can see that they're pretty close to each other. And then we have some Lisa Eldridge uh, lipsticks we're gonna take a look at. We have Velvet Decade here, and let's put that right next to Brun Celeste. Okay, so you can see the difference in tone. The Brun Celeste definitely is like cooler. It's got more gray, more purple in there. And uh, the depth of color is gonna be stronger. It's more strongly pigmented in the Lisa Eldridge. We also have Lisa Eldridge Velvet Midnight here, which is more of a really deep purple. I wanted to show you how blue-based that is in comparison to Purpura 12 and even Brun Celeste. This is Velvet Muse, which is going to be rosier than Terre de Toile. You can see it's much more of a nude-based rose tone there in comparison to the browner shade here in 108. And we also have Fawn. And that's how they, it compares to Terre de Toile. So Terre de Toile has more brown. It's also a little bit more golden. So you can see here that the Terre de Toile in 108 is going to have more brown, a little bit more golden tones, whereas this has warmer tones, but it's more, it's also a little bit pinkier. We have Velvet Blush, and this is 118. You can see it's a lot deeper. It's also more, a little bit more purpley, and uh, compared to 118, it's going to be cooler in tone. This one here is Velvet of Fair. You can see that it's going to be deeper than Velvet, uh, what is that? Terre de Toile. It's deeper than Terre de Toile, but not that much. I would say that this is the closest out of them. And again, this is Velvet Affair from Lisa Eldridge. And we have Velvet Cinnabar here. And over here is 158 Brun Solaire see how that goes. 
Yeah, this one's a little bit warmer in tone, a little bit orangier, cin cinnabar is. So it's got a little bit more of that persimmon kind of color mixed in with the brown. And we have Velvet Myth. Let's put that down here, right against Purple Etoile. You can see that they're pretty close, actually. And I think the Lisa Eldridge might be slightly pinker, a little bit more like reddish pink in there, but they're pretty close. And then we also have Velvet Jazz. Let's put that here. And you can see it's gonna be deeper than all of the Chanel shades. It's closest to the Rouge V Radiant, but this Jazz is much more of a burgundy red than Rouge V. So these are my comparisons for now. If you have any additional comparison requests, please let me know and I would be happy to accommodate if I have those shades. Now, overall, my thoughts on the collection. I think it's a really nice collection. I love the asymmetrical five-pointed star on here. I think, you know, because of the, the kind of the dots in here, it actually makes me think more of a starfish. Um, but I really like it and formula-wise, I prefer this Rouge Allure Velvet to the traditional Rouge Allure Velvet. I like having a little bit more slip on my lips. I think it's more comfortable. And sometimes I feel like the Rouge Allure Velvets can be a little bit drying. And these feel less drying to me. So I find them to be more comfortable to wear. I really like the actual shades that they have in this. And, you know, some of them, obviously you've got some shades that maybe you have in your collection that are very, very similar. But there are some that I think are a little bit more unique or at least more unique to my collection. So I think 118 is really a nice shade. I think, you know, I also love Rouge Cosmique, but it is pretty similar to some of these other reds. And I think Bren Celeste is a really unique color. And honestly, even though it is a little bit patchier and thinner, I really like it. So, um, yeah, I would purchase all of these shades again. I think they're really nice shades. And I would love to know if you're interested in these, if you picked any up, or if you're planning on picking any of these up. And I hope this was helpful. So please let me know if you have any questions and I would be happy to see you soon. So thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day. Stay safe and healthy.